Lake Ponchar train is large enough to see the curvature of the Earth, like with these transmission lines when viewed from one end. This video is about photos of the transmission lines and how you can recreate them in Blender. Here's what I mean. Distant objects are obscured by the curvature of the Earth. But does this apply to the transmission lines? Let's find out. YouTuber Soundly took this photo of the transmission lines. Walter Bislin was able to recreate the photo on an interactive web page. I recreated Walter Bislin's graphic in Blender. Make sure to check out Soundly and Walter Bislin's content. Links in the description. Curious how to make such graphics yourself? That's what the rest of this video is about. I'll show you step by step how I created the transmission lines in Blender. We're almost ready for Blender, but let's get a couple of preliminary concepts out of the way first. Skip ahead if you want. Let's go over drop and refraction briefly. Imagine an observer on top of the Earth, which we'll call the origin, looking horizontally to the right. That's the x-axis. We want to know what the drop due to Earth curvature is at a given distance x. It's possible to approximate Earth's curve with a parabola like when people talk about 8 inches per mile squared. The parabolic approximation works well when close to the origin, just 30 kilometers in our case. Here's what we just saw in formula form. You may have heard 8 inches per mile squared. It can be stated more precisely using either customary or metric units. The above can be derived from this generalized formula. Refraction makes the Earth seem larger than it really is. K is a coefficient of refraction. A value of 0 would show the curvature of Earth accurately. A value of 1 would make the Earth seem flat. A value of 1 7th is common. This formula converts from the actual radius of the Earth to the radius used in the formulas above. Walter Bislin's page goes over drop and refraction math in detail. Links in the description. It's possible to use Walter Bislin's page to zoom in on one transmission tower like this screenshot. I cleaned up the screenshot and added transparency. This image will be used in a Blender. Blender time. I'll go quickly, so pause or slow the video if need be. Note the keystrokes on the lower right. If you have trouble understanding me, turn on closed caption. When you first start Blender, it looks like this. We don't need the light or the cube, so let's get rid of them. And switch to front view, and we create a curve to represent the curvature of the Earth. We would like to start here at the origin and extend along the x-axis. So to do that, let's move it two units to the right. And we would like its origin, which is here, to be at the world origin, where the 3D cursor is. So you go to set origin, 3D cursor. And now it's 4 meters long. We would like to be 30 kilometers long. So we scale it up by a factor of 7,500. Let's pan out and look at, look at it. And it gets stuck. And that's because the clipping bounds are too small. Let's change it to 1 meter to 50 kilometers. And now, see this right here, how it's 50,000 meters? That's because here in the scene settings, our units, if it changes to adaptive, then it actually is a 50 kilometers, which is more pleasant to look at. Before we forget, let's do the same thing for the camera. So, go down here to the camera, and right here, where's this clip start? Again, one meter, 50 kilometers. All right, going back to a curve. We can continue panning out. All right, now let's go into edit mode and look at these control points. We would like more of them. so that we can curve it precisely as we wish. And that's it. We're just going to name it. We're going to name it Flat Curve. Let's duplicate this curve to make a curve that has actual curvature. And then if we go Tab, we can look at the control points. We want to move all the control points up. We want to move this one up the most and everyone else less so to make sort of like a very slight heel. So we do that in Blender, is do proportional editing, go here. Inverse square is what we want. It's basically like 8 inches small squared. And then what we can do is we can just do G and return, and then we can use the move dialog to do the actual values. 67.1 up on the z-axis. And down here to the proportional size, just go 30, 1,000, 30, 1, 2, 3. All right. Now if we go over here, you can actually very faintly see that one of the points has moved up slightly, and not so over here on the right. Let's zoom in a bit to get a better view. Okay, so we want the origin of the curve to be here, at, at the selected point. So Shift-S, 2, and 
go into object mode and then set origin to 3D cursor. All right, we actually want this curve to be down here, starting at the origin in the world, and then deviate slightly from the x-axis. And so we're going to reset its location so its origin is at the world origin. And then we're going to reset the 3D cursor to the world origin. All right. And let's pan out a bit and look at it. And you can see as we go over here, it's, it's curved slightly and deviated from the x-axis. And we're going to go ahead and name it trans curve. We would like to add a transmission tower image to our scene, and the way we do that is by adding a plane. Let's zoom in on it, and let's move it so we're close to the x-axis. Do RX 90, RZ minus 90. All right, let's pan out a bit, and we'd like to move it up so it's on top of the x-axis. All right, and we'd like its origin to be at the x-axis. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to change its dimensions to match that of the image, which is 12.88 to 23. All right, and after um, scaling and rotating an object, it's helpful to apply the rotation and scaling, particularly when using modifiers, which we'll do later. All right, so let's go ahead and add the image so we see it in this rectangle. Go for shading, and let's start by having a similar orientation here. All right, and now we're going to create a material for it. We don't need the sophisticated shader because we don't care about complicated light properties. We just care about having the image in there and having it match pixel to pixel. So we get rid of this. Go search and do image. And Pick our image, and let, we're going to start by just clicking directly up. Okay, so the transparency isn't working here. So we, to make that work, we need a more sophisticated shader laid out. You know, search, and we're going to start with a transparent, transparent shader and a mixer. And let's hook that, hook this up. Put the color down here. Set the transparent up here, and the alpha channel will control how much of each. And as you can see, it's still not working. And you might think that that might be because this is a material view instead of the render view. It's still not working in the in the render view, and that's because the EV render doesn't support transparency. So we go here to cycles, and there it is. There's the transmission tower. So let's go back to the layout and go to render view here. We'd like there to be more than one tower, and the way we do that is with modifiers. So let's select it and go over to the modifiers tab, and if we start with an array. And for the count, there's going to be a total of 85. And we're going to have not a relative offset, but a constant offset of 297.55. And you can see now that there's towers extending along the x-axis, as we would like. However, they're not curving downward. They're just strictly in a straight line. So we actually want another modifier, which is this curve modifier. And we go here and we pick the trans curve. And if you watch very carefully, some of the distant ones will curve down a tiny bit. All right. Let's add some water to our scene. The way you do that is you add a grid. Now let's go switch the top view and zoom in on it and switch the solid view. And for the subdivisions, we want it to be 100 by 2. And if I switch into edit mode, you can see how it looks. We want it to begin at the world origin, so let's go GX1. And we want its origin to be at the world origin. Set origin to 3D cursor. And I'm going to pan way out and set its dimensions to 30 kilometers and 200 meters. And again, it's a good idea to set rotation and scale. All right. And again, let's sort of look along the x-axis at our transmission towers. Now let's go over to the shading tab and set, give it some color. And we don't need the principal shader again, so we're just going to get rid of it. We're going to add hue, saturation, 
And for the color, we go RGB and we go .05, .23, and 1. And if we go to render view, we can see it here. But we may as well go back to this tab and again go to render view. Like the towers, we would also like this to curve downwards. So the way you do that is we go to modifiers. In this case, we only need the curve modifier. So trans curve. Let's get the camera in the correct position. So we'll click on it. We'll do Alt-G to reset its location, Alt-R to reset its rotation, and do RX90, RZ minus 90 to get it looking along the x-axis, and then R. G X minus 50 to get it 50 units back from the first transmission tower. And if we insert, we can see what it looks like through the camera. And zoom in a bit, go GG. And move over here to the side a bit. All right, let's go ahead and finalize the position of the camera. And so this is 23.3.5, 10.3. And for the rotation is uh, 89. Dot nine two three and minus ninety dot two four nine. All right, and so the, the act, let's zoom in quite a bit, and that's in for instead of fifty millimeters, we got to two dot eight seven meters. All right, and see how it's black here? That's because there's a limitation to the number of transparent objects you can see through. So if you go to the render properties, light paths, transparency. Turn up to 60. All right, and one other issue is you see the ratio of this box indicating what the render will look like. That's actually a bit different than what we want. So if we go here to the render output, and right here for the resolution X, we want 1620, 1620. And that's going to make it 4 by 3, and that's pretty close to what we want. Let's get the colors closer to what we want. So to start with, the sky should be white, so let's go to the world properties, the color, and then crank this all the way up. And it may not be obvious, but there's a subtle difference between some of the pixels here and what was in the original input image. Blender actually does modify the color slightly, you know, does some color processing. And we want to disable that. And the way we do that is you go up here into the render properties and scroll down to color management. And we change the view transform for filmic to standard, and it's a subtle difference, but the it, the pixels are exactly the, have exactly the RGB values expected. It's possible to adjust the modifiers to see what it would look like if the Earth was not curved. Let's start with the water. So we'll click on the water and go to its modifiers over here in the modifiers tab, and see here where we selected the object, the trans curve. If we instead selected the flat curve, then you see the water appears to be quite a bit higher up and the transmission lines go down into the water. And likewise, we could do the same thing for the transmission lines. We go to its curve and change that to flat curve and see that that's what it'll look like if the Earth was not curved. So quite a profound difference. Now that we're done, let's go ahead and render the final image. Go over to the Render tab and zoom in a tiny bit, and we're going to hit F12. And I'll speed this up a bit. And now that it's done, we can save it by doing Shift S and call it whatever we want. I think maybe a good out name would just be translines.png. The Blender file, linked to, in the description has additional curves, each with a different refractive constant. Here's what they each look like. No refraction, k equals 0. Transmission lines, k equals 0 0.050. Standard refraction, k equals 0.143. No curve, k equals 1. And this is what it looks like with no curvature at all, like if the Earth was flat. Since the water is limited in size, the horizon is wrong, but the transmission lines and their intersection with the water is correct. The curve seen in the photos is correct. The Earth isn't flat. Have photos of the transmission lines or causeway? Post them in the comments.